Okay, there it is, the abandoned Gulfstream G3. Been sitting there for years. Dang, look at this interior, it's like a time capsule. No way, it still has drinks and snacks from years ago. I gotta try to buy this thing, guys, we gotta save it. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know, I know everybody is eagerly awaiting the new panel reveal video on November 6th to Juliet Romeo, our once banana bonanza, now blueberry bonanza with the new paint job and interior. I cannot wait to reveal this plane to you guys. It is like almost done, like probably 95% done. So stay tuned. But I figured in the meantime, you know what? I still gotta get you guys some videos. You read that title correctly. We nearly bought a Gulfstream G3. Crazy, I know. This plane has such a wild story and I'm about to share it all with you guys in this video. So grab some popcorn, grab a drink, and prepare yourself for the story of the cheapest Gulfstream to possibly ever sell at auction or at least recently. A ton of private jets have been landing all afternoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop in the Lucid, which has dual pane crazy windows. This thing is so quiet on the inside. You won't even hear the jets going overhead. So it'll give me a nice quiet environment to tell this story. What do you guys think in the new car? You guys haven't seen this before on the Aviation Channel, only JR Garage, the most recent video taking delivery of this car. This thing is so cool. Come on, show me the lights, got really cool. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, compared to a Tesla that you see, you know, 10 of them a day, whereas a Lucid, you rarely see these on the road. They're just starting production. And of course, it's got this wild two-tone interior. Super cool, fun, and different. Take a look. Oh boy, you guys haven't seen that one coming to JR Garage soon. Those are twin turbos. So yeah, stay tuned. That is going to be a wild rebuild. All right, it's crazy we can go from $500 Porsche 944s to a lot more than $500. Lucid Air Grand Touring. So we just love all cars. And you know what? On that same note, we love all planes. Bonanzas, 172s, and Gulfstream G3s. So where do I begin with this story? Um, okay, so this starts, uh, what was it, about four or five months ago. I was, you know, browsing the interwebs like I always do. You know, trying to find the next hot deal on a good rebuild and flip candidate. So what do you know? I think it was on Instagram or Facebook. Everybody started sharing this post of this auction site that would be auctioning off at no reserve a Gulfstream G3. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. And when I saw this, my eyes lit up at the possibility of acquiring a Gulfstream for pennies on the dollar. Keep in mind, these planes back in the 80s were like, I don't know, $20 million or something, which you put that into an inflation calculator. So that's like, what? $740 million billion. $40, $50 million. This plane was king of the hill back in the 80s. This was the plane to have. All the celebrities, big businesses had Gulfstream G2s, G3s. But now they are like dinosaurs. They're completely, I mean, not completely obsolete, but you know, one by one, they're just being parted out and used to keep the flying ones still flying, if that makes sense. The cost of inspections and engine rebuilds eventually just just aren't financially feasible anymore for the value of the plane. So, so unfortunately, every year that goes by, there are less G3s still flying. And another big factor I forgot, and the reason that a lot of G3s got killed off back in, what was it, 2015 or 2016? That's when they required these planes to be equipped with level three hush kits, which are very, very expensive. They're basically like uh, airplane mufflers for the engine, right? To quiet it down into noise sensitive airports in the US and you know, Europe and across the world. Uh, guess how much these little little mufflers are that are on the back of the engine? I'll zoom in on a picture. What, $100,000, $10,000? No, $800,000. Why, why, why? Or maybe even a million depending on the brand. What? When that came out in 2015, 2016, that sent a lot of G3s to the graveyard. So that was honestly the first thing I looked at with this auction. I was like, okay, I zoomed in on the engines. Like, does this have the hush kits? If it doesn't, it's for parts. I mean, you're not gonna get that thing flying again, most likely unless you maybe take it south of the border and go operate it and... countries that may not care about those as much, but it had the hush kits. So I'm like, okay, we're, we're, we're getting somewhere. It's got hush kits at least. But I noticed that the plane was in California. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm in Arizona. That's a, that's a short drive away. And the auction's coming up in like a few days and it was at like $10,000. So I'm like, I gotta see this one through. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. No, don't do it. Do it. No, don't do it. Now let's be clear, there's a lot of things that would scare away a lot of potential bidders uh, from this plane, a lot of red flags, but there's two huge, huge red flags, just like waving in our face, nobody bid on this thing, and uh, that would be, uh, they're selling it with no logbooks, they can't find the logbooks, and number two, it's been sitting for a very long time 
probably four or five years. I can't definitively figure it out because the flight tracker hasn't updated. Uh, so the, those are bad. That, that's very bad news for the plane. But I had a solution and that was to do some digging online and see if I could turn up any service records or proof of when the engines were overhauled or when the phases were done. And uh, boy, did I find just that. So once there was the potential for actually bidding on this thing and trying to buy it, I put my head down and started to go to work researching this plane in particular and then G3s as a whole, maintenance costs, inspections costs, intervals, things like that. And I found a lot of good information. So I come across the previous for sale listing when this plane was for sale in, I don't know exactly, it doesn't safe and in the description they outlined a lot regarding the uh, maintenance and upgrades to the plane so i was like all right boom i hit the jackpot like i have the, a huge leg up knowing so much about this plane i learned that it's actually a super low time airframe when it was for sale it had 3700 hours and then of course it has the stage three hush kits uh wireless internet dual sat phone european compliance new paint new interior 10 seats fresh 1c inspections and then it says here under overhaul on the engines that both engines were overhauled just 700 hours ago. These engines cost like a million bucks of pop to overhaul. Pretty much, I guess nobody overhauls them anymore. They just get used engines to put on them, which is way more cost effective. But for this one, having like fresh engines nearly, I don't know when they were overhauled, or what more needs to be done to them, but I was like, man. I'm reading here that the 72 month inspection was done in late 2013, making it due in 2019. So unfortunately, six years has expired when I looked at this plane, so I was like, dang it. The listing didn't mention the for sale price or what they were asking back in 2013, but obviously I can assume it's probably in the millions of dollars. And uh, overall, I was pleased to find this information, even though it confirmed that the six year would be due because it expires in 2019. It shows at least that the engines were possibly next due for inspection in 2023, or that 1C inspection. I'm not an expert on G3s. If you guys know Gulfstreams, comment down below. Comment section is gonna be juicy. What are these kids doing thinking they can buy an abandoned Gulfstream and make money? I get it, I get it, okay. so. At least that catches you guys up to speed. Let's cut to me actually looking at the plane. So once I did all my research, I was like, okay, okay. If the plane is like super clean and you could potentially get like a six year inspection done and it passes without too much wrong with it, then like maybe it could fly again. That's a big maybe because also another big, big, big red flag is that when I started to call some people and do some digging, they're like, oh yeah, by the way, like it's missing some avionics. Like maybe somebody came in and like stole them while the plane was sitting. Anyway, cut to present day. We roll up on the Gulf Stream where it's been for the past many years just sitting. Okay, there it is. The abandoned Gulf Stream G3. Been sitting there for years. Behind the gate. Look at that poor thing. What a beautiful aircraft. Just been sitting collecting dust and rotting away. Honestly, it was it was kind of eerie, like rolling up to it. I mean, you go to satellite view like years back, that plane has not moved. There used to be one right next to it. They sold that one maybe a year ago. I don't know what that one went for. It didn't have hush kits. That one was probably well worse off. Uh, but this one was the last one to be sold. Uh, basically, they were building new hangar space, so they couldn't have that ramp open anymore with planes parked on it. They had to get rid of all of it. So the planes had to go public auction, had to sell them. You, you of course get all the court paperwork so that you can go register them and you know fly them again if you want, if you can somehow get them airworthy. So I rolled up, I organized with the airport to get a tour. Uh, he let me back there and you know, I'm gonna start rolling more of the pictures and videos. Of course I had limited time, maybe 20, 30 minutes for an inspection window before they closed and had to leave. So Sasha and I were there, she was walking around the outside while I climbed up the sketchy ladder, like go in the baggage door and go inside this plane for the first time. Gosh, that was something. If, you, if you've ever climbed aboard like an abandoned airplane, you would know what I'm talking about, but you just like, you know that plane could tell so many stories if it could talk and just seeing it just covered in dust was honestly sad. It was like a time capsule. There were bags of Cheetos and water bottles waiting for its next flight to be eaten. It was like bizarre. And I opened some of the drawers and there was like bottles of wine and you know, all sorts of alcohol, drinks, snacks, even some like bags and luggage and just uh, blankets and pillows. I mean, all that was still there. But overall, the interior was actually in really nice condition. The woods, the wood was beautiful. The seats looked like they had been recently upholstered. Uh, the carpets, the side panels, the roof, it all looked really good, as you guys can see in these videos. Seats, very nice. Speak. 
stickers. Okay, screens. So I continued on my way up and that's when I got to the avionics bay, I guess you could call it. I noticed the wood panels were off. So I was like, hmm, what's going on? And then when I got up there, I could clearly see those panels were covering uh, all the avionics equipment, a lot of which was gone. So whether they were stolen, borrowed, taken off for parts, regardless, a lot of stuff was missing. And when you're talking G3 parts, they only made, what, 230 of the planes or something. Yes, there are a good number of them in scrap yards that are being used for parts, but overall, parts are difficult to get on these planes and they cost a ton of money. So when I saw all the avionics stuff missing, getting up to the cockpit, you know, a lot of it was still there, but the uh, FMSs, screens in the middle, I think that's what they're called, they were gone. So again, I don't even wanna know how much FMSs cost for a G3 or if you can even find them. So somebody got in here and really wreaked some havoc. So that was unfortunate to see because I wasn't sure. They didn't show pictures of this. So they just said some stuff is missing. So I'm like, okay, well, how much stuff? MPU, gone, gone. Stability, augmentation, air data computer, autopilot computer, air data, gone, gone, gone. Okay. Also, a few more things that were really sad to see. The engines, the poor Rolls-Royce engines with an 8,000 hour TBO, very robust, tough units. Uh, they drink a lot of gas. Yeah, like 550 gallons an hour, something crazy like that. Nobody said they're efficient, but boy, they make a lot of power. They sound wicked and they're overall pretty robust and reliable. If you take care of them and maintain them. So not only was it just sitting outside, not in a hangar for the past many years, but they didn't put engine covers on the engines. There were no, you know, air, you know those little red circles that they put in the duct to go into the engine? Those were not there. And the fact that this thing hadn't been run up in many years, oh my gosh, those engines are probably a just disaster. Maybe they will never run again, I don't know, which is really sad because they were really low time engine and low overhaul, apparently. Don't know for sure, but that's what the listing said. So that was really sad to see. And then the rudder just, you know, moving in the wind, just back and forth, a little wind gust would come and go pew. And with it being California, Southern California, it is what, 20, 30 miles from the coast Pacific. So it's so unfortunate that's a pretty good environment for corrosion to spread easily. It's not like it's the desert in Arizona. I could see evidence of that with just corrosion on the exterior and some rusty hardware and bits of the wings and landing gear. Oh my gosh, let me roll the, let me roll another clip of the landing gear. Being able to go up inside the landing gear, the, the doors, the inspection panels, I guess were dropped down. So you could see everything and oh my, goodness, all the wires and piping and tubes. It, it was crazy to see. I've never been up close to a Gulfstream like that. I got up close to the brakes and the tires and crazy how big those things are. And I think they have, I think they have carbon ceramic brakes. So again, probably a small fortune to replace those again. Um, walking around the rest of the plane, the paint, of course, being in the sun for many years was not in the best of condition. Maybe, maybe with like a crazy good polish, you could get it to come back. Uh, but there were definitely some signs of wear and tear. And one other very unfortunate discovery, uh, Sasha actually found this. I was inside the plane when I came out. Sasha's like, uh-oh, take a look at that wing. And I look, what do you know? Damage on the wing. Unfortunately, there's a huge chunk hole smashed into the left wing. I actually did a little more investigating. I went to the aerial view and the other G3 that was parked next to it, that's exactly where the wing tip would have gone. So I'm sure during a storm or a gusty wind, it pushed the G3, the other one, into this one and its wing smashed into this one's wing and put a nice hole in it. So I was like, oh, you know, I was already just one thing after another, I was like losing confidence in bidding and winning this thing. And then when I saw the damaged wing, I'm like, God, give me a break. How much to repair that damage? Probably tens of thousands of dollars, if not even more. My excitement and um, curiosity about the plane quickly turned into just nightmare and horror at the idea of buying this plane and somehow trying to do something with it. Like, what do you do if you win this plane? For starters, where do you put it? They want it gone within a month. I don't know somebody at Ontario Airport that has a hangar that could store this plane. I don't want to transport this plane to remove the wings and to transport it. Oh my gosh. It's like, what do you do with it? And the fact that it's probably not going to fly again very easily, but still the auction was only at $10,000. So 
I'm like, okay, well, I have to bid. It's a $10,000 Gulfstream. I have to bid on this thing. So that was that night. You know, I go back, I run some more numbers, I do some more research on, on you know, maintenance stuff. I quickly realize that this plane probably will never fly again. So I'm like, okay, well, what are the parts worth? There's definitely some good parts. The interior is great. Um, you know, the, the one wing is good. Maybe something you can do with the engines. I even got to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna buy this plane. I'm gonna sell whatever parts I can off it. I'm gonna rip the wings off and then I'll take the fuselage and I'll rent it out to fake wannabe influencers to do photo or video shoots or maybe like a movie prop setup, something like that. I was like, okay, that's a good idea. If I, if I can get it for like 50 grand, I'll just do that and rent it out and make money that way. So that was the plan. That night it was still, the auction was still like 30, 40 grand or whatever. So I made an account, I registered. So you guys ready for this? I woke up, the bid's still at $70,000, $77,000 with uh, like 30 minutes to go. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'm about to buy a Gulfstream G3. So I log in, I place a few bids. I think I was high bidder at $81,000. It only took a bid or two to get on top. Oh my gosh, it was starting to set in that I could like actually win this plane. Now I'm panicking. So the bidding continues. Time is winding down 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I'm still on top. The bid goes from 85, 90, 100 grand. I'm still on top. I think we can pull this together. I'm optimistic. And then out of the blue, two people come in and just run this thing up. But I just watched the bid slowly tick up. Cross 200,000, 250,000, $300,000. Oh, hey, 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 slow down there, cowboy. Here we have it, the final bid. Are you ready for the 1983 Gulfstream G3? $334,750. There you have it. So it didn't go for 50 grand, didn't go for my 100 grand. Personally, I think that is way too much money. I'm not an expert on Gulfstream G3s. I know very little in the grand scheme of things, but still, 334 grand. Comment down below, guys. Would you have paid 334 grand for a Gulfstream that has been sitting outside with no covers, no proper storage, no proper pickling of the engine, with missing stolen avionics, with a damaged wing, bad paint, I don't know, was that a deal? Did I miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime to have a Gulfstream for $334,000? Let me know down below. Now, before you race down to the comments and say, wait a second, you said $100,000 in the title and thumbnail. That's the $300,000 Gulfstream. We want the $100,000 Gulfstream. Well, guess what? There's a second G3 that I almost bought. This one uh, does not have hush kits. 6,500 hour total time approximately. And this one was probably in need of a lot more work to ever have a hope or chance of seeing the skies again. Most likely, then again, I'm not entirely sure because unfortunately I wasn't able to look at this one in person. But similar year, this one was 1981 instead of 83, like I said, more total time. The paint job's pretty cool, but again, since it's missing those $800,000 hush kits, it probably means this plane hasn't flown very much since that rule went into effect in 2016. And the fact that this one is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, been sitting there for years, it probably has even more corrosion and stuff to deal with. So. I was like, you know what? It's still a cheap Gulfstream. I might as well bid on it. The interior looks pretty good in the pictures. It doesn't appear to be missing any avionics equipment. You can see those FMSs, everything in the cockpit is still there. But overall, way more unknowns with that plane because I didn't lay my eyes on it. But still, you know me, I had to at least bid on it. So I set my sights on it, gave it a few bids, and what do you know? I was high bidder again at less than $100,000. And once again, for a second time, I thought I was going to uh, be buying a Gulfstream G3, which is both exciting yet absolutely terrifying and makes you feel completely idiotic and stupid at the same time when everybody tells you do not do that. So if they're all telling you don't do it, there's probably a good reason. So I had to be a little cautious once again, but still I figured $100,000, you can't go wrong. So we bid around that. Once again, I figured, oh boy, here we go again. It's gonna go for 300 grand. No, it only sold for $124,000. That's it for a Gulfstream G3. So there you go, your $100,000 Gulfstream G3, almost, 124. Had I bid just 25 grand more, we would have a Gulfstream in the hangar here, okay? Just kidding, it would not fit at all. This can barely fit a King Air, so a Gulfstream, oh my gosh. Where would I even put that? Maybe it's a good thing I didn't win. It was probably good I didn't win either Gulfstream. But what do you guys think? Did I miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime to acquire a cheap Gulfstream? Either the one that sold for $330,000 or the one that sold for $124,000. Which do you think would have been a better deal? But there you have it. Crazy story coming out of left field. I, I know the comment section is gonna be interesting on this one, so don't flame me too hard. I'm just a curious kid who wants to own a Gulfstream but doesn't have $60 million for a new G650, okay? Okay?
there we go. Deal? So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, comment down below if you would like the next story time video of how we nearly bought four King Airs, two of which were government spy planes that flew over the Middle East. Yeah, another crazy story. Those ones I saw in person once again, and I have the video clips. Crazy. So if you want that story, comment down below. I'll share another one. But, uh, you know, close calls on a few of these. We nearly got them. But uh, actually, speaking of getting them, we did buy two planes, so I have to reveal those soon. So not all is lost. I was smart. You know, I said, you know what? Let me not shell out this much money. It's probably a terrible idea. Let's put this money toward planes that would probably be a better investment. And that we did. So we acquired two new planes. Wait till you guys see what they are. Uh, very cool planes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this will be fun. So thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.